Welcome back to It's New. I'm Barry Schwartz. With me are the crew. Hey, crew. How are you guys? You got to wave because we're all one big square. Crew's good. Hi. Do you remember like going to Hollywood how Squares and you would be like... <laughs> yeah, I do Hi. remember that. <laughs> I think we're all dating ourselves. Greg, you remember. That. Yeah. Don't, don't act like you don't. Or the Brady um, Bunch. That's another thing. Another yeah. I remember that. I see it here. Um, all right. So... Let's go. I'm going to talk about the Father's Day weekend Google search volatility and maybe touch a little bit about AppleBot. Uh, Greg, what are you talking about? Some Google Ads advertisers are not swiping right on new credit card billing changes. Morty, can you beat that? Is it Starship? Nope, it's Google, and nothing's going to stop us now. <laughs> Good luck, Crystal. Um. SEOs are looking for some oversight on the AI overviews. Okay, so over the weekend, we surprise, surprise, we had yet another search volatility from Google search. Their ranking volatility is all over the place. Well, this one is very interesting. Some of the tools are like literally insane like accuranker and alguru i'm not sure what's going on over there but those tools are like i haven't seen those tools that heated in a long time um while semrush and similar web and all the uh, many of the other tools are very very low in terms of volatility but the chatter was very very interesting this weekend so if you did see any ranking volatility um over the weekend you're definitely not alone it's just weird that um it's weird that we just saw some of the tools go crazy but not all of them more than enough, all your rankings dropped over the weekend. It would make sense if it did, but I'm not sure. All, all of them. Every all single, them. I have no more ranking. I'm out. You're out. All right. You could always do something else in your life. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then just a quick note on Apple bot. Google has updated the Apple bot documentation, um, specifically um, adding a ton of information around um, Apple bot extended, similar to how Google bot has extended. So Apple bot, if you want to block Apple from using your, content from using it for AI purposes. You could do that. They also went ahead and added sections around different Apple bot user agents and how to do a reverse DNS. They're really getting serious about search. So I documented the differences if you want to take a look at that. Uh, but it's very interesting to see Apple kind of get more into this game, especially after the WWDC. On that, uh, Greg, how's the credit cards going? Um, not well for some Google ads advertisers. There was a message that was sent out um, on the 13th of June. And essentially for many advertisers, it seemed like they were kind of like high spending advertisers in this test. Um, they were saying that your billing uh, options are changing and that you're going to not be able to use credit cards for this uh, subset of, of ad advertisers that were uh, sent that mail. Um, you're now gonna have to use ACH, wire or paper check. Um, the thing I thought that was strange with it is, again, they gave uh, to the end of um, July to have this change happen. So you get like a month and a half. And if you don't have this billing change completed, your ads account will uh, be subject to suspension, which is kind of just wild, right? Um, and this is a big deal for advertisers because many people like do leverage those points and rewards and it's a big deal. Um, and that credit card can, can like actually like be a big help in, in a way. Um, so a lot of people were were, were really upset with this. And I, I see kind of both sides of this. Like Google is going to save two, 3%, probably 3% um, from not having to take these credit card processing fees. Um, and that makes sense for them. But also you typically try to make people want to use your ad software, <laughs> like you use your ad platform. <laughs> so I don't know how like upset some people are going to be with this, but you know, for all the hey, we're catering to small business and all these things like that's important for some people. And, um, you know, I guess it's important for Google now to make that extra uh, percentage. Yeah, the, it seems like the advertising community is not happy about this because they're losing all the credit card points. I mean, when you're spending a substantial amount, you know, of money a, a, a month, like 150K, something like that, th those, yeah. th that adds up and that helps your business, that helps you get travel points, it helps everything. So, um, you know, I, I, I understand both sides of it, but that's the point that Google ads is at right now. They, they don't think they're going to lose many advertisers, but you know, we'll see with it. Like I, 
it, it, it's you think it's going to result in people people leaving Google Ads? Spending less? I don't know. I don't think Google Ads is a good source for anybody local anymore. Like small, medium businesses. It's just not a, it's just not a good platform for that. For you, if you really know what you're doing, um, e-com, B2B, B2B SaaS, stuff like that, like that, it, it's still really great. But it, to me, it's like, if you can say, hey, I'm just going to go put my money over on Meta now and put it on my credit card and Google Ads hasn't really been great, there might just be a way for people to like stop you know, be like, ah, oh, okay, fine. I'm going to be suspended. Google ads has, has been wonky, you know, for, for small business for a while. But at least we got Google testing new things and saying, let us test, let us fail. Right, Morty? I'm sorry, what? Fa like the whole I'm just AI kidding, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. <laughs> all right. So um, Google had an all hands that was covered by CNBC, which was then covered by Danny Goodwood over at Search Engine Land. And they said a couple of things about AI, like get out of our way. You'll never stop us. It doesn't matter how bad our stuff is. Well, that's not exactly what they said, but it sounds better when I say it that way. They said things like it is important that we don't hold back features just because there might be occasional problems or I don't think we should take away from this that we shouldn't take risks, we should take them thoughtfully and so forth. So if you're an SEO saying, hey, the AI reviews were crazy, Google scaled them back, they're never gonna come back. Google's basically saying, no, we're gonna come back, we're gonna take risks, we're gonna keep doing the AI thing. Now, I thought one interesting thing that SEOs didn't seem to talk a lot about was one of the quotes was, we don't, I'm sorry, yeah, we don't just have to understand the quality of the site or the page, we have to understand each passage of a page. So maybe we should be talking more about quote unquote passage ranking, which people got confused with passage indexing, but it definitely seems like Google's hyper focus on passage of being able to understand them. I'm not saying that they're using them to rank them, but the Google is basically telling you we're hyper focused on being able to understand passages. Yeah. I, I found that very interesting as well. Yeah. It, it's, I don't think it's more like the passage ranking it's just like, because Google's going to pull these things out, use your content, anywhere on the page and they have to be careful about like, all right, maybe this piece of content is legit and trustworthy, but maybe that joke you made later on down on the page mocking whatever topic you're talking about should not be used in that. I mean, I do that all the time in my content. I'm like, fact, 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 joke, fact, fact, joke. Um, or not fact, but just like information. Um, so I, I think Google just, I think that's what Google's saying. I completely, completely wrong, but I do think Google needs to be Hyper focused on making sure that the content that they're using is stuff that they should be using for AI overviews. Because I think sometimes they've had instances where the AI overview showed a sarcastic post. Um, yeah. Like if, and and like if they understand, for instance, that the Onion is largely sarcastic, and if they're reporting something like it's almost certainly not true, and and things like that, then that's that's one thing. And I and like you know Barry, you use some sarcasm in your articles sometimes as well. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's something that they should, they should be able to, to understand. So maybe that's what they're, what they're referring to there. Yeah. But also if like in the A overview itself, they have like, you know, like uh, how to prevent kidney stones and there's a, a, a section where they talk about like diet and kidney stones, then they're going to have to make sure that the page that they're linking to for that one particular section about diet and kidney stones, that they completely understand like what's happening on that page. Cause it's being, it's a subtopic that's being linked out to in that case. Yeah, for sure. And then you have all these SEOs and content creators or whatever you want to call them trying to track to see what they're getting with AI reviews and they're going crazy out here. Right, Crystal? Yeah. So Glenn Gabe just posted uh, on Search Engine Roundtable. Um, he posted an article all about trying to understand the AI overviews and the maddening adventure of tracking AI overviews in Google Search Console. And he was saying how, you know, there's a few few issues with this. First of all, they're only triggered in the United States. Secondly, they only trigger for logged in users. Um, they're also they're dynamic, and also he says that they're still they're still refining it. So it's re they're very fickle. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not, and it's very difficult to track. Um, and I think that this is something that's really really important. He gives a lot of examples of of how of how he's trying to track it and how how they all, all work out there. And he's and in this final section, he's in all caps. Give us AI overview data, um, says Glenn. Um, and how, how, you know, it's really important that, you know, while they're rolling out this feature, it's fine, but site owners really, this is quoting him, site owners really need to be 
really need to understand the impact of ranking and AI overviews. For example, are they driving higher click-through rate, more traffic, et cetera? Heck, are they driving traffic at all? And I agree that's, that's something that we really need to have eyes on. And if we can measure it, then it matters. And then we can we can respond accordingly. Um, he even proposes, you know, it'd be really simple to add in a, a little filter into Google Search Console. It would help us a lot. Um, so this is something that I agree with Glenn that, that, you know, if they're rolling out this new feature, it would be great to have some visibility on it so that, so that we can respond accordingly. For sure. Um, it was surprising to me when I interviewed Elizabeth Tucker from Google and I'm like, Sundar Pichai said, it's really like the topic of having data in Google Search Console or an AI overviews is for the search team. I'm like, all right, you're the search team. You're part of the search team. You're very involved in it. You know, why, you know, could we get that data? And she's like, I don't even have that data. I'm like, oh. What do you mean you don't have? I'm like, I'm like, I had to stop there because I was at my limit in terms of I had the, the interview was like 30 minutes long, then I had to fit into it. And I'm like, wait a second, how could you not have that data? One is you are in charge of making sure that the rankings and everything in terms, you're a data analyst. Like this is your bread and butter. This is how you track this stuff. And two is it's like you should have it. If you're saying to me, I don't even have it. Like who has it? Like where is it going? Right. I think Who do we need it. to talk to? I think it's so rapidly evolving. Um, I hope I'm sure they've got a handle on it, but I, I wish they'd tell us who it was. <laughs> I don't know. What, how do you guys think this is the rollout's going for AI overviews? Not great. I mean, yes. I think it's dandy. I, I just it shows so rarely now that I don't know how they're ever gonna have adoption of this. Like I understand that they're calling it the next big thing and they're like, oh, we can have these mistakes, but like there's no data for you know any webmasters or site owners anything like that and then sure. i can never even get it to fire i don't know to quote anyway. shakespeare thou dealt protest too much like the fact we're gonna do it anyway we're gonna keep going kind of makes it feel like maybe you're like i too, too I much know, I, protesting too much the thing i'm most surprised about is that they didn't just copy bing's homework like Bing have had this kind of thing for a while. So the so Bing Copilot, you type in, I don't know, spaghetti sauce, and it will give you a thing on the side. It's like spaghetti sauce is blah, 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 blah. And it's different in Naples than it is in Rome. And blah, and it like spits out all this sort of stuff. And like, and they, they're able to do it in the EU. They're able to do it in other places, like et cetera, et cetera. And then if you want to, like, if you want the copi the full copilot experience, you just click on the thing, it drops down. Like, I'm really surprised that they haven't, that they haven't done, done that um, with, with the rollout because it's, it, seems like that would be the way forward but yeah i was surprised they launched it so broadly i thought they would launch it as it is now with like nobody seeing it ever mm -hmm. and just saying we have it just so wall street's happy so that was my thought yeah on that note <laughs> thank you so much everybody see you guys tomorrow and have a great day everybody bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.